The Blaze Mark III Lite is a high-end bicycle taillight on the market. It has great build quality. It has rechargeable battery with long runtime, and it has new advanced operation modes for day and night riding. But is it really the best taillight for cycling today? My name is George, and welcome to Telvia. In this video, I will put the Blaze Mark III taillight to the test on the bench and on the road. Compare it to my 8-year-old original Blaze tail light, measure the light output in different modes, investigate its new React and Peloton function, and give you my tips and tricks for using this light. So grab your favorite drink, relax, and enjoy the full story. If you're in a rush and interested in a specific topic, you can jump to the relevant timestamp in the description. After trying many bike tail lights, 8 years ago, I found a keeper. The original Blaze Mark I version made by Exposure Lights, a British company that manufactures a variety of high quality bicycle lights. I have owned several of their front and tail lights. In fact, I will use my series headlight today to test the Peloton feature on this new Blaze Mark III light. But my favorite light so far, and the one that I have been using most, is this Blaze Mark I tail light. After eight years of use, it has lost a lot of its battery capacity and now can power only about three hours of light flashing at high power. Exposure Lights is now making a third generation of Blaze Light called Blaze Mark III with React and Peloton. Because of the pandemic and resulting surge in cycling activity, it is very difficult to find this light in stock. After a few weeks of searching, however, I was lucky enough to find it, and now I have it in my hands and eager to explore its new capabilities. First, let's unpack the Blaze Mark III Lite and compare its external design to the Mark I version. Years ago, the original Blaze Lite came in a nice semi-rigid box, included a charger, several mounting bands, and accessories. I still use this box for the parts. The new packaging is simpler, the charger is not included, only one rubber mounting band comes with the light. The good thing is that it still has the same anodized 6063 aluminum finish, which is strong, attractive and easy to clean. The thick rubber bands are actually convenient to use and are durable enough for long-term use. I was very concerned about these bands for the first couple of years, but they have never failed me. The cover on the original Blaze Light is made of transparent silicon and it still works well to protect the charging port and control button. The thin part that holds the top connected to the body, however, got almost worn off on the Mark I version from occasional rubbing by my shorts. The new light has a small charging port cap. This appears to be a better design, but my first few experiences recapping the port were a bit fiddly. It is difficult to push it in place and it keeps popping off. Perhaps it will get easier with time. Let's talk about the light mode differences between the two lights. Both lights have the same three levels of light output and two emission modes, constant and flashing. The operations are simple and intuitive. On the Mark III version, there are two new additional operating modes and I will talk about them in a moment. The Blaze Mark III Lite is designed for the hefty runtime. In high power setting, it can power 6 or 12 hours of constant or flashing illumination, respectively. For a long endurance ride at low light intensity, the Mark III version runtime is simply prodigious. It's 24 or 48 hours in constant flashing modes, respectively. To compare the relative light output for the Mark I and the Mark II versions of the light, I will use my Sikonic L308 light meter in the incidence light mode. The incidence light mode is used to measure light intensity from a given light source at a set distance. I will measure incident light levels for each light at three power settings in constant and flashing modes at a distance of 6.5 inches from the light source. The presented results were reproduced at least three times for each part of flash cycle. 
I was able to measure the light intensity during peak flash and between flashes by taking repeated measurements and selecting the lowest and highest reproducible measurements during flash cycle. The results are in foot candle units at a distance of six and a half inches. The Blaze Mark III version emits more than two times greater light intensity than the Mark I version in all power settings, while flashing or in constant emission modes. Interestingly, the Mark I version emits only one flash pattern in all power modes. However, Mark III version has a more complex flashing pattern. It emits one long and two short flashes in high power setting, and it has single flash pattern in medium and low power settings. So this brings me to the tip number one, to quickly confirm that the light is flashing in high power setting, which is a must on a bright day, look at the flashing pattern. If it flashes as a long, short, short pattern, it is set to the high power setting. Now, the most exciting part of the review, the React and Peloton modes of Blaze Mark III Lite. I'm very excited about this part of the review since I had a lot of fun figuring out how these new functions work and learn some unexpected results and useful tips. To put the light in the React mode, hold the button for four flashes and then release it. The Blaze Mark III Lite has a built-in accelerometer that triggers change from flashing to constant light pattern and changes light intensity when braking. This mode is designed to alert the other road users behind you that you're slowing down. To get a better understanding how this feature works, I set up a bench test to mimic a bike braking by rapidly moving and stopping light at a specific distance from the light meter. Once the react function is triggered, I measured the changes in the light output. Here's what I found after working with this setup. Upon braking, with the react mode and flashing pattern enabled, the light switches from flashing to constant output with twice higher brightness in low and medium power settings. In high power mode, however, it switches from flashing to constant output at 30% lower light intensity. This makes sense since high power mode is designed for daytime use, where changes in light intensity are more difficult to detect than at night. Switching to a lower constant output when braking also extends the runtime in the flashing mode. The two or more numbers for the flashing mode in the table show the light intensity between flashes and peak of the flash or three flashes in the high power setting of the Mark III version. In my experience, during riding on the road, I found that intensity and pattern of flashing in the React mode are independent of the rate of braking and that the React function works as an on-off switch. The light reverts back to flashing once the brakes are released. When braking in constant light emission mode, the intensity of the light at all power settings doubles upon braking. Riding with my friend on the road yesterday, I asked him to describe the light behavior when I brake. He confirmed that React function is activated when I apply a moderate to high braking power, and flashing pattern resumes when I release brakes even on steep uphill or downhill course. This brings me to tip number two. Use flashing pattern instead of constant output. Flashes have twice higher brightness than constant output and they are more noticeable on the road. Working with the light during my testing, I've noticed that the React function gets activated very easily by tilting the light forward towards the front of the bike. Even a slight tilt, five to 15%, triggers the change in the flashing pattern and the light intensity in both flashing and constant modes. It sort of makes sense because when we brake, the bike tends to lurch forward loading the front wheel and unloading the rear wheel, similar to when we brake in the car. In fact, it is much easier to activate React function by tilting than by applying a deceleration along a horizontal plane. Interestingly, if the light is left in the tilt position, it eventually resumes its flashing mode and intensity level in about five to 10 seconds. So tip number three, we can use this tilting activation of the React function to quickly confirm that the React mode is enabled and working by simply flipping the light from standing to its back. Cool, huh? 
Next, let's talk about the peloton function. To put the light in this mode, press the button until it flashes five times and then release. The peloton mode is designed to reduce light intensity when it detects a rider close behind you. Well, there is a catch. In the peloton mode, the light intensity is reduced only when it detects a bright headlight behind it. For example, another cyclist is following you with a headlight on in constant output. I decided to test how well it would work in a night commute scenario. I set up the light in the test track and shined the exposure series headlight at various distances from few inches to six feet away from either directly behind or at 45 degrees from the side of the taillight. Upon illumination with the headlight, the intensity of Blaze Mark III light in the peloton mode got reduced by 5 to 20 fold to a very low illumination level of 25 to 55 foot candles. If you're on a dark night trail in the woods, this may be useful to avoid blinding the rider behind you. If, however, you are commuting on the road, this can present a serious danger. The peloton function can be triggered by the headlights of passing cars or when crossing intersection by cars stop on the cross street at a red light. It takes 10 to 15 seconds after peloton function is activated for the light to resume its normal light intensity. During this time, your visibility to other road users is drastically reduced. So, unless you are on a single truck at night and have another rider drafting you on your back wheel, this mode should be kept off, in my opinion. If you decide to use it, flash a light on it and watch for a market reduction in light intensity. Here are the three takeaway points of my review. The Blaze Mark III taillight has excellent design and build quality. It is two times brighter than its Mark I predecessor. The React mode works well, and I would leave it on on all right. The Peloton mode has very limited application and is potentially dangerous when commuting. It cannot be used with the React mode enabled. I would never use it. So what is my verdict for the new Mark III Lite? Well, if the built-in battery is as good or better than the one in the original Lite, I think it is a winner as the best overall tail light on the market today. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining. Please support this channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Receiving your comments, likes, and subscription motivates and inspires us to create new, higher quality content for your enjoyment. Thank you.